So it is the 21st of July, 2017, and I have welcomed my wonderful friend and colleague, Alice Mixer, to the ranch here, farm, and we're getting ready to swap sessions, and we're going to record them um, on this video. And we are both going to be doing sessions using um, absolutely 100% pure uh, Dolores Cannon method and see what comes up. And the one thing that I wanted to tell Alice is, uh, and I haven't told her this yet, but um, this is an appropriate time to tell her, Alice, the session already has been going on all night long. My dreams all night long, I have already like prepped and teed this up. And I can't even really remember them, but every time I opened my eyes and uh, thought, wow, I remember thinking, wow, the session is already happening. And then I would either drink water or use the restroom. I'd lay back down and then I'd forget whatever it was. But I do remember the wow part about how the session has already started. And that happened all night long. And I actually slept. I actually slept about an hour longer than I usually do. And um, I'm, I'm kind of surprised how long I slept. Um, I almost got up at four and then I thought, no, I'm going to go back to sleep. And then even more of these things happen. So we're getting ready to do the sessions today and I'm first. So is there anything you want to say, Alice? No, let's have fun. All right. We're going to have fun and we're going to report later. And we're actually going to record some of this and maybe even share parts of it with the public. So thanks. The following segment of the session is information that came out about the upcoming eclipse on August 21st, 2017. I'll talk about that in a moment, but first I want to explain what led up to this clip and a bit more about the entire regression session experience. Before the session even began, my practitioner, Alice Mixer, and I did a little practice visualization exercise. And as these things sometimes happen, it was simply an opportunity for the actual session to begin before I ever even laid down. Alice had me imagine looking into a closet and there in the corner was a little two foot tall being, an elf who when asked said his name was Alvin. Alvin ended up being a sort of guide or MC of my entire regression experience. He introduced or welcomed in a variety of animal and earth elemental energies to the stage, so to speak. I had a lion guide, an owl, a multitude of red birds, water elements appear and illustrate and explain concepts and answers to questions given. So in this clip, it is Alvin that Alice asks the question, if he can assist us in providing the answers. The video shows how that question was answered. And after the clip, I'll explain a little bit more and connect some dots. So from that place, can we ask him our questions? He says, everyone's here to answer your questions, and some who have gathered may have better answers even than I. Okay. <laughs> How fun is that? It's fun. Oh. So we welcome all the beings who've gathered. Everyone is welcome. Mm -hmm. We would like one to step forward who can tell us of the significance of the solar eclipse. The one who can tell us in the best way for the highest good the significance of the solar eclipse. Would that one step forward? Yeah, it's actually an owl. Okay. Which is really interesting. Oh my goodness. Let me know what the owl says. So, first off, it's a really huge owl. It is, um, the owl is about three foot tall. And it's white and he's beautiful. And he's alluding to Dolores Cannon's um, screen owl. Okay. Um, but he says he's a real owl, but he wants me to remember that for some reason. Um, Dolores once saw an owl like this, and she wondered what it meant. And uh, 
he's talking about. How the eclipse, particularly in the path that's quite close to here, but not directly over us, but only two or three hours north of here, north east of here, will be under the direct path of this eclipse, where there literally will be a shadow, a darkness, come over the planet for that path. Mm -hmm. And he says, he says it's significant not so much because of the physical components of it, okay. but because of the cosmic components of it and because our attention is concentrated. He says the most important thing about the eclipse is that the entire planet has an opportunity to focus on a singular event and for even gosh, she's, she's feeling very wise and there's a lot of slow wise thoughts coming from him and that humanity can set aside some of their current focus on power, control, war, or even personal things like bills and relationships, whatever. He says the most significant thing about it of all is not so much that the shadow does anything, but that we all are so focused on it at the same time. So it'll, as a humanity, it lift us up above the other levels of concerns to all focus at once mm -hmm. on this cosmic event. It, it has every opportunity to do so, but it, along with many events in human experience, can be viewed from a variety of perspectives. And with viewing the event as a positive opportunity, it absolutely can do that. And the majority of the planet will see it as just exactly that. Very good. Thanking him. He also says, the reason that I came forth, he says, to answer this question is because I am a creature of the night. And now he shows me thousands of owls flying. God, everything's thousands, you know? Yeah. Owls, even with the pyramid, there are thousands of pyramids. Yeah. Around thousands, millions, infinite. He's showing me owls from all across the country and the world following the path of the eclipse like they're gathering and then swooping and following that path and he says this is an energetic sense it's not necessarily that people will look up and see owls flying under the eclipse but it's symbolic and energetic because of the darkness yes and the wisdom darkness and wisdom Anything else for me, or is it complete? He's bowing and going back to the edge of the stream. We thank you. It's taken me a few weeks of contemplation and watching things unfold before finishing this video. And today I finally understand why it's taken this long. My plans for the day of the eclipse itself, which is just three days from now, 
have changed from what they had been for months. I actually was supposed to do a quantum healing session that day, and neither the client nor I had actually realized that that was the day of the eclipse when we had made the appointment so long ago. We no longer are going to do a session that day, and that decision was made just a little while ago. But we are going to keep our appointment to spend time together. And both of us have been receiving strong guidance, a lot of synchronistic <laughs> signs, coincidences, to do that here at our farm in the portal. The portal is a marked area not far from the farmhouse where back in 2011 I had an amazing experience of a huge column of light come down from a crystal clear night sky and beam this massive sparkling energy right outside of my bedroom window. The light was so bright it lit up the entire landscape for as far as my eyes could see. That event continues to be one of the most extraordinary things that have ever happened to me in my, my entire life. And here's a drawing I made of the, the column of light the day after it happened. I'm still learning all the reasons why the column of light appeared and what it meant then and what it means now. I do know that when when the column of light appeared, when that amazing thing happened, and that was more than six years ago now, linear time stopped for me to witness it, or rather maybe I, I stepped between time in a linear sense to have that experience. It was, it was an amazing thing. And over the years, this spot, this place on our farm has been the setting for other high strangeness and also some miraculous events healings even. It's remained a powerful and sacred place, not only for me, but for others who have been here to visit. Anyway, back to the regression session. Since the session, I've seen so many owls, so many. They've been flying in front of me as I've walked to the barn. They've flown down and around the elm trees when I've gone to visit the horses in the pasture. And they've been consistently calling outside of my bedroom at night. Sometimes I get up and go outside and answer them with their own call. So a series of coincidences and synchronicities has me completely changing my plans for the day of the eclipse. I think the owls are reminding me about the session and everything else, the animals especially have arranged it, so I'm not doing a quantum healing session. But my friend and I, I think, are, are going to go inside the portal. And currently it's my guidance to step within the light column of the portal during the darkening of the sun. And what I understand is there's a wisdom made available for us to see in the darkness, but that we must access our own light within to make that wisdom visible. The light portal is like a safe harbor, an amplifier of cosmic Christed light, and it's the perfect place to be during this important and powerful day. There's something about this place here on the edges of the tall grass prairie in rural Kansas that requires my presence and that of my cosmically connected friend, I think, too, to help anchor in this light through the grids and into the planet. I'm well aware of the many perspectives that others are bringing to this eclipse event, from the purely scientific to the religious to the indigenous to New Age thought and more. Many of those in the metaphysical communities, many of my best colleagues and friends are laying low, as our native ancestors did it, and have for millennia, staying indoors and quiet, contemplating, some are even fasting. 
Others are gathering in groups and sacred spots for ceremony or meditation or simply observation. But it is my plan to connect to the light and energy of the great galactic central sun as it sends down its beautiful platinum Christed light and bring this Christed energy down through the eclipse and align it with the portal in the great column reminiscent of the light column that I saw all those years ago. And then this beautiful column of light will go through the toroidal fields of my own physical body and down through Gaia to its very core. And then I imagine that she will send up her own pillar of light back up through my body through the eclipse again, returning back to the great central sun. <laughs>